I was watching this random YouTube channel. I just discovered. I didn't know it existed beforehand, but I must be slow. And it's really good. I recommend you do check it out. It's called this channel. It's called, let me put it up on the screen. Sorry. There we go. It's called TJ Loves Fights. And they got this really cool video, which, which is titled, Why Boxing Stars Make So Much Money and Why UFC Stars Don't. And it randomly just popped up on my flipping feed. So I thought I'd check it out. But it also got me thinking about a question that I want to ask on the other side of things. So if you're out there and you're a UFC aficionado and you know all about all that kind of stuff, then please, if you can offer any insight, I'd like to hear your insight on this. But this is a really cool and astute observation from this guy who runs this channel. Um, um, TJ loves fights about the disparity between UFC fighters pay and boxing, you know, most boxing professionals pay. So besides the major difference in how the money is split up in each sports event, there is also the opportunity for a boxer to make hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars from sponsorships, something that the UFC stars do not have. When boxing, you've probably noticed that the biggest stars wear some of the biggest brands on their shorts. From Dolce & Gabbana, Hublot and Christian Dior, I would assume that these sponsorship deals are worth hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars. Meanwhile, in the UFC, Dana White made one of the most outrageous and infamous deals simply known as the Reebok deal. This deal made Reebok essentially the sole sponsor of UFC gear, so UFC fighters could no longer take sponsorships to wear on their pants or any of their gear. This reportedly made UFC fighters lose out on hundreds of thousands of dollars and completely removes the opportunity for UFC fighters to make more money outside of just their fight purse. Now today, Venom is the sole sponsor of the UFC and they do offer sponsorship bonuses, but they only cap out to $42,000 and you still cannot have any other sponsorship on your gear besides Venom. So again, because the UFC is the controlling league and the UFC fighters are simply just their employees, they really have no say in this and they have to follow this Reebok deal. So no So the thing that I don't understand, because there's been, you know, there's been a lot said about the UFC, Dana White and Fire Pay, you know, tired argument, but essentially the UFC don't pay their fighters enough. The fighters essentially risk their lives, limbs and everything to go in that ring and put on a fine and entertaining fight. And some of them leave with a purse of like 30K, right? Which is insane when you consider the amount of costs that go into doing a training camp. You have to pay for coaches, the flights, the nutrition. By the time you're actually finished, you're looking at a very, very, very small fight purse. So the pay is astronomically bad, right? Considering the dangers that they're putting themselves through. But the thing that I never understood when it comes to the UFC and fighter pay is that there was a period back in the day, even when Brendan Shaw used to fight actually, where fighters were allowed to have sponsors on their shorts, to have sponsors, sponsored kind of uh, posters with all their sponsors on it, which their coaches would hold up as they were kind of warming up or kind of, you know, um, shadow boxing in the octagon before they started the fight. And that was a common thing. So if the UFC were taking the chunk of their money from the Reebok deal and the sponsorship, then at least the UFC fighters could make up the difference by having the sponsors on their shorts. So the one thing I want to know if you're a UFC fan and you're really plugged in and balls deep into this flipping thing why don't Dana White and the UFC let the fighters have the sponsors on the shorts imagine let them pay you crap right let them pay you a base pay of 30k which is still horrendous and whatever it may be and imagine if you've got a couple of injuries and you're only fighting maybe once or twice a year you're not making hardly any money especially if you're you know in training camp you've got to pay for all that stuff or you've got to pay for gym in general it's going to be a lot of expense it's going to be a lot of money out and not a lot of money in but let's imagine the fight pay is still crap as it is but then also imagine a future where you have the ability to have your sponsors on your shorts so you can make up the difference or you can basically pay, get paid similar to how like bartenders get paid in the states right where they have a really crappy base pay but then they have the opportunity to make tips and tips are essentially unlimited unless you've got like a manager who makes you want to share it with your staff other colleagues but for the most part you can make as much as you want on tips that kind of gives you opportunity to be a little bit more creative and maybe hustle a little bit more on the floor so why can't fighters do that and get that thing like why does the ufc have a stranglehold on not only the sponsorships all around the UFC, the fighter pay and then treat the fighters like employees or like contractors. And Dana White famously said the UFC isn't a job, it's an opportunity, which is absolutely insane because they're the only legitimate high level league out there, right? I think the guy even said in his video, essentially the UFC is the NFL and there's no other competition out there, but they try and make it seem like there's competition out there. Um, so why don't they do that? Why don't they allow the fighters to put their fling on the shorts? I don't understand it. 
Like you can literally scam the fighters if you wanted to. Continue to scam them in terms of fire pay. Don't pay them what they're worth. Absolutely take the piss out of them in that regard. But just let them have the ability to make up the difference with the sponsors on their shorts. That'll be making such a difference, especially nowadays. I think back then when Brendan was fighting and stuff, and even when he was fighting, the reboot deal got instead, I think, towards the end of his contract, which is why he kind of decided to quit or move, you know, or leave the UFC and stuff. And nowadays especially with the amount of brands out there especially with the amount of exposure this ufc guys got out there especially with how prevalent pre prevalent social media is just imagine how much money some people would be making out there and the thing would be crazy too it wouldn't even be good fighters that would be making the money it'd be the ones who have just got the most social media following who have a bit of a stick about them so those people would also be able to make astronomical amounts of money that doesn't really correlate with their skills so it'd be a make or make for an interesting competition in general but for whatever reason the ufc just seemed to have a stranglehold on that don't want to budge at all and really it's that to the detriment of the fighters and detriment to them actually getting future um you know prospects coming through because you know you'd have to be a bit of a dummy or you'd have to really believe in your abilities if you're a kid coming up and you have some you know combat skills you have a talent for flipping wrestling or grappling or something to choose ufc because you can either end up being you know the next future star or you can end up being a ben Askren right fighting on the periphery in these other promotions around the world and finally come to ufc maybe a bit too late because the pay's horrible and then get absolutely starched when you take that step up in competition it's just not worth it i think in that regard so i really do wonder why they don't do it um people are saying in the chat was it um free market all day ufc is too socialist um f trump <laughs> okay cool but you're saying it's because the ufc makes deals with the likes of reebok to fund the ufc itself that's understandable but i think now the point they're at especially with the espn money they could they've got enough money to kind of make that deal to be worth i won't say worthless but they've got enough money to kind of you know not be dependent on the reebok deal i mean especially with the kind of partnerships that they've got at the moment they could definitely find a way to kind of pull out some money from the back of the cupboard or back of the city to pay some of the fighters more um bronze arms view says you see the details or say that no other sponsors though and you'll need to get a betting site that will pay the most richard yoplet says i think it's simply aesthetic stainer doesn't want it to look like nascar ah really so so the dame is really into the aesthetic side of things so he's more of a creative director maybe he's one of the rare ones out there he's actually got a bit of a penchant for the art around it right the presentation but he's also somebody that's very business minded that's interesting isn't it? you never really see that because he does a bit of matchmaking also so he's a very strange mix of a business person that'd be interesting if he legitimately doesn't want them to have the sponsors on the shorts just because it looks ugly that's interesting, isn't it? I guess you could always circumnavigate it by having particular sections of the shorts where all the sponsors are. Maybe the sponsors are all lined in a line, you know, to the side of the shorts. Maybe there's a square on the left-hand side that you can put it on. But I don't know. I just find it a little bit hard. And um, whatever happened to the Mark Hunt lawsuit or the other ones, lawsuits, I think most of them maybe end up getting dropped or settled out of court. Or maybe they're just taking time to resolve. To be honest, this isn't my fight to fight anyway or any of our fights this is the fighters if they really want to create change we've seen it already in other industries when people set up unions or whatever it may be um you can get it done but the workers need to, to be the ones who are kind of pushing this forward the fans can't be fighting these guys fight so when they when the fighters are crying on their social media accounts about having you know only five dollars for the rest of the week it's really up to them to kind of you know make a change in that regard and rally their fighter friends and stuff to kind of put this forward to the ufc or make some sort of change whatever it may be but it's not really up to us spectators but i just found that video pretty interesting to be honest like the fact that you know they're obviously really tight-fisted tight-fisted in one way by limiting the amount of stuff by a pay which also might make sense because they've got such a crazy roster in it the ufc the roster of the ufc is ridiculous compared to boxing um especially some weight classes like the competition is just insane so for them to be paying every fighter in the top 15 flipping five million every time they fight it wouldn't make financial sense right that place will probably go under pretty quickly um especially how quickly the belt changes hands and whatnot um maybe damaging losses will damage the person's potential to attract an audience all those things could probably play a factor in the decision making but it just would be nice if they had the opportunity to make an extra bit of money um on it on top of it and obviously it's not going to look right on tv with all the sponsors from perspective of the person that tunes into ufc and sees different sponsors at the time yeah that's true okay i didn't think about it that way to be honest bronze arms that's a very interesting point i just i just assumed it was mostly a business thing but it does make sense if professionally doesn't want that to look on there in it i get it i get it i get it